I just had a really awesome uh, chat hangout, Zoom hangout with some Sync Academy members. And if you guys are in Sync Academy, Hans does this weekly kind of just check in hangout on Fridays, um, usually at 8 a.m. Pacific time. Um, I think it can vary sometimes, but he always posts a link. Hans is an absolute rock star and he's a really, really awesome member of our community. Um, it's just a really cool way for you guys to just get to know each other, you know, talk to each other through a video format, and it's really motivating and encouraging. Um, I was fortunate enough to have some free time this morning. I was able to join, and this topic came up when we were just talking and spitballing, and I really wanted to share it with you guys. So when we are using reference tracks, and definitely it's something that I've been hounding you guys, you know, for years and years on this channel always use reference tracks, especially if you're brand new to the licensing business and you don't really know, is my track licensable? Is it professional enough? Is it on par with the professionals out there? Well, what better way to know that than to just go get one of those tracks from a library you wanna work with and just compare. What is their structure doing? What kind of instruments are they using? How does their mix sound? Um, you know, what's going on with their music? And let's see if I can kind of put myself in that lane, essentially. However, there is a fine line, a little dance, a little balance that you have to walk when you're using a reference track because if you get too close to the reference track, you start to sound like, well, first of all, it could be copyright infringement. <laughs> you know, you can get in some bigger trouble if you're literally just ripping them off. So let's just assume you're not doing that. But if you're so close that your track kind of just feels like the cheap version of that track, and a lot of times you get reference tracks from clients because they're like, we really want to use this track, but we just checked it out and it's going to cost us 50 grand to license we don't got a budget for that. So maybe we can go find a library composer that'll do it for five grand or 10 grand and they can really cut down on their costs. You and I are probably more than happy to do it for five or 10 grand. So they really love that track, but they can't afford it. So they want something kind of like it. The problem is though, if we only are trying to make a track that's just like that one with, you know, we, we change one note for another note, we change a, a quarter note into a dotted quarter note, but everything else is pretty much exactly the same. Well, your track sounds like the cheap, you know, karaoke version essentially of what they really want. And a lot of times you actually will not get the gig if you're that close to the reference track. So the dance becomes following the reference track, listening to what's going on with it, kind of getting into that sort of place where it is emotionally, genre-wise, maybe tempo, drum beat, that kind of thing. But you do need to find your own voice within that process. So it's almost like you see yourself as an artist, right? See yourself as a, a artist that's charting and has a defined style. And most of you, I think all of you guys probably have, you may not be real aware of it, you do have probably your own style. It's like your own signature kind of sound that you do. It's your take on the type of music that you're producing. So get that reference track, follow it as close as you possibly can, but also once in a while pull back from that reference track and say, but I wanna create something that's just me, that's original, that's coming from a source of inspiration. And you really gotta ride that wave when it hits you because if you're constantly you know, blindly just following a reference track and there's really no creativity, natural, you know, um, organic creativity coming through you, it's gonna show in the end of your track. Like when you we hit bounce on that track, it's going to sound flat. It's gonna sound ugh, like, yeah, you checked off all the boxes, but there's no emotion there. There's no spark of creativity there. There's not, There's no magic, right? There's not that X factor within that song. So how do you get good at this? There is no trick, there is no gimmick for it. All you gotta do is keep doing it. That's really what you gotta do. And especially if you are brand new to the business and you're not even with the library yet, you should be doing this now, all the time. Every time that you create a track, use a reference track, follow in its footsteps, but then go into your own version of it, right? So that when somebody hits play on it, they feel that spark of emotion that you were trying to capture from it as well. So that it's cool, you know, or as you say, it's following kind of what, where the reference was going, but it is its own entity. It's its own creative voice. It's its own track that can get people excited about it. That's actually what's more important than being directly on the tails of that reference track. So I wanna make sure that I put a little bit more clarification out there. This is something that, you know, I've been talking about reference tracks for four years, essentially, on this channel. But that fine line has never really even occurred to me until I had this really cool chat with the Sync Academy member. So thanks to you guys who were there with me um, that inspire these kind of ideas. And um, this is kind of how this business is. You start to just do things a lot 
And sometimes you can't even verbalize what you're doing, but you just do them. And so the more that I'm in, you know, Sync Academy talking with you guys and getting the questions and getting your guys' stories, the more it crystallizes in myself what my approach is to this to this business. And in my career, I've had many of those opportunities where here's a reference track, they give it to me, you know, uh, following the footsteps of it, uh, create something like it. For my standards, usually what I'll do is I will usually follow the BPM exactly. So if it's a slow, you know, 90 BPM kind of a thing, I will follow that BPM exactly. I'm not trying to get so creative that I create like an up-tempo track when they were looking for a slow down-tempo one. So usually I go right in line with what they want. And a lot of times the drums, I'll go very, very close to what they did. I probably won't use the exact drum patterns. Obviously, I won't use the exact samples or anything like that. But I will try to go with something that, what is this drum beat telling me? This drum beat is telling me heaviness, all right? Let's say we're going for kind of a slower, dramatic, like blues rock track or something like that. Well, what are these drums telling me? Well, these drums are, um, they feel like, you know, the weight of the world is on these drums. They're so heavy. They're like shaking the ground. Um, it's like we're kind of stomping through the forest or something like that. Okay, cool. Let me go find some samples that communicate that to me. And if they do kind of like a boom, boom, clap sort of pattern, I might do that exact pattern. Or if I feel like boom, I try to switch it up just a little bit so it feels more like me. It feels like more of like a drum beat that I can really groove to. And my test is like, am I going in the right direction or wrong direction? Is am I dancing? Am I nodding my head? Is my whole body singing? Like literally physically, my body has to be moving with the music. If my body is standing still and I'm just kind of hitting buttons and okay, cool, checklist, I have the drums, I have that and I'm not moving with the music, I'm not headbanging, I'm not dancing, I'm not feeling like I'm having a party in my own studio, then I know that nobody else is gonna feel it either, right? That's sort of my barometer, is, is music is emotion, right? Emotion drives all music that's worth listening to and worth licensing. So for me, that's my barometer. I start with the, the tempo, I start with the drums, and I wanna feel kind of where I'm going with it. As long as that's starting to move forward, then I know that I'm onto something. It doesn't guarantee I'm gonna get the job, it doesn't guarantee I'm gonna get the, the gig or whatever it is I'm going for, but at least I know that I have no regrets on what I submitted to them because I was feeling it. There was something original, there was a spark of creativity, there was a wave of this feeling that was washing over me, and I followed it while using that reference track as sort of my guidepost of where I can kind of go, where I should stay away from, that kind of thing. So yeah, how do you get good at this stuff? Just do it over and over and over again. Again, if you were trying to go become a professional skateboarder, I could sit here, you know, not me, but I could go get Tony Hawk, I could get some professional skateboarder on camera for 72 hours straight giving you all their tips. Does that make you a great skateboarder? No, you've got all this, you know, intellectual knowledge, but your feet don't have the balance, like your your waist doesn't have that balance. You, you don't feel skateboarding in your bones yet. The only way to get good at skateboarding is go out onto the sidewalk or the park and skate until you fall over a thousand times. And then you start to figure out, oh, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. Same thing here. So you gotta just continuously do it. And you'll know when you hit it. You'll know that, hey, this approach, whatever I just did, I came up with something that's awesome. There's a spark of originality and creativity in this. Um, but it also followed in line with what they were looking for with this reference track, and you'll know. And then whatever you did to get there, that's your process. Write it down, put it on the wall, so that if you ever hit this point of like, I don't know where to go with this, you at least got something that worked for you in the past, okay? So hopefully that's um, helping you guys. If you struggle with reference tracks, getting them to sound close enough, or maybe you're getting, you know, you get lost in them and they sound too close to your reference tracks, comment below and let me know what you're getting stuck on and maybe I can put some more useful videos or tutorials out that can help you with that.